the first year was just kind of like trying to figure it out, figure it out. And then I got the idea because when I was doing final expense, I used to run my own Facebook ads. Okay. So I'm like, you know what? Why don't I just run ads for hypnotism? And I've literally been running the same ad for three years, three and a half years. And it, it wow. works like gold. Wow. Same, same thing. So, and I built an entire, you know, we've got like 15 people on my team that just are like therapists, salespeople and stuff like that. That doesn't include our marketing team, video editors, blah, blah. And I've built a, built an entire like organization off of one advertisement. It's kind of crazy. Excited for another episode of 2000% Raise. My, my producer, this is the first episode where I'm actually listening to my producer. He's telling me I have to keep the microphone a little bit further away from my mouth. He tells me it every week. I never listen. Mike, I am listening this time, my friend. And uh, let's see. He goes, John, you, you, you get a little excited sometimes, and, and it's really hard to manage your audio, buddy. I'm listening. You, you only had to... You only had to tell me 48 times for 40. That and the peas, right? <laughs> the, I, yeah. Dom, Thank as you. you're going to see, I, 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 I yell a lot. All right. So, the, yeah. So, we, <laughs> so here you. I am in Chicago. My guest today is in, in Las Vegas. Um, I haven't even asked him his heritage, but, but his name is Italian. My Sarasani heritage is, is, is Italian. His name's Dominic. And, you know, it, it, it reminds me of the old days. If you, if you never seen the movie Casino, go, go see it. Or uh, or Bugsy, Bugsy is Bugsy is one of the underrated movies of, of the mafia era, in my opinion. I don't think I've seen that one. You never seen it? It's Bugsy no. Siegel invented Las Vegas. It was his brainchild. Right. The mob backed him up. They thought he was crazy. Vegas would not exist um, today if it if it wasn't for him. Um, is is the storyline at least? It's a little bit boring. That's why it never got the street credit it got. Uh, it's Warren Beatty instead of Robert De Niro. Hey, you know, I uh, right, right. Well, the, you know, there's still the the Siegel Suites here in Las Vegas. They're everywhere, and they're basically like weeklies. Okay. And you know, they're kind of they're run down. That's where like all the prostitutes and stuff are. But uh, <laughs> you see, Siegel Siegel Suites are everywhere in Vegas. Well, and you know, you'll you'll get that shit where it's a nod to to the old era. And the farther the farther right. we get from that kind of history, the the less it's going to even be known to these generations. You know what I mean? You know, I, I want to share a story here before before I bring you out, Dominic. And it's um, I I don't know what it damn is, and I, and I'd love you to comment that when I bring you out is is I've developed this anxiety as I've gotten older. I've I've spent my whole life in airplanes, like my whole professional life. I've always been flying all over the country. You put me on a regional jet; it's never been a damn problem for me. And now in my 40s, really the last couple of years, I've gotten claustrophobic on airplanes to the point that I get on the 787 Dreamliner when I go to L.A. because there's one flight a day that's on that damn thing. I will change my entire schedule to make sure I could sit in first class on that flight because the first class cabin on those damn things is so damn big. Well, John, any first class is good, right? No, the 787 Dreamliner with United's different level shit. It's like an international flight that you would take to like asia or something and they have a chicago to la one and i make that flight often um well okay cool what do you do when it's not available because it's usually not in, in other destinations the, the 737s um have first class but i gotta be in seat 1e where i could look and see the door there's a little bit more headroom there put me in 1f or 1a or any of the others screw that dude i've literally gotten off of airplanes i've literally gotten off of airplanes and you know, um, Bob Mennery, a, a friend of mine of, of all people, has has commended me on being like vulnerable with this shit and sharing this stuff. Everyone tries to be big and macho on their podcast and stuff. And fuck that, dude. If you got a fucking solution, I, I want to fucking hear it. I'm not making this shit up. Um, so so one of the things that's been presented to me to to possibly overcome this is is hypnotism. And, um, you know, that's that's sort of a foreshadowing of, of what my guest does today. and. He's not a guy in Las Vegas on the strip, you know, do, doing, um, hit. by the way, back in the day with a good friend of mine, Rob McCoy, it was his bachelor party or was it his brother's bachelor party? Anyway, we went to the Mardi Gras casino. I don't even know if it's still there. Is it still there? No, I've never heard or of no, it. No, it was the Orleans casino. The, one of the ones. Yeah, that's still there. A little off the strip. Okay. 
and they had a hypnotist and we got called on the stage. We were 22 years old up there acting like chickens and all this shit. Uh-huh. And, and then the people we were with, so we were full of shit. They didn't believe us. But, but I, I got to tell you though, man, I, I believed it. I, I, I wanted, I was up there. I don't know. And I, I look back and it's like, well, is it because I felt the pressure of wanting to conform to what the hypnotist was leading me towards? And I have a hundred people on me, so I better do this. But I felt like I was hypnotized. Um, yeah. We have, we have one of those VHS tapes with. <laughs> you with, still have it? Yeah, I, st- I do still have yeah. it. I probably watched it like seven years ago when I found it. Um, and it, it was just kind of cracked me up because I'm like, I don't think I was really hypnotized, but I wanted to be hypnotized. I don't know. So a lot of people. That's don't what believe- everybody says. Yeah. Okay. Well, there you go. It's just it- they don't know what it what it feels like. So when people say I wasn't hypnotized, I say, okay, what does hypnosis feel like? And they always say, I don't know. Yeah. And they say, how do you know you weren't hypnotized? You were doing the the thing on stage. So typically, it's exactly like what you said. Mm-hmm. You're up on stage, and your mind's like, wait, am I doing this because I, he's telling me to, or do I really want to, or is there pressure? regardless of what it is, you're still doing it. Right. right. And moments before that, you might've thought to yourself, nah, I don't know. And you know, it's funny. uh, The first time I moved to Vegas, I thought hypnosis was fake and all that. Right. And I I went to a a stage show and I'm sitting there. I'm like, these people are not acting. They're, they're, they're really up there, like doing something like something's going on. Yep. And I thought it was like mind control and all this. And it's not, Yep. this is the best explanation I could give for people. You seem like an outgoing guy. And I'm yeah. sure your buddies were, you're on a yeah. bachelor party, you guys are drinking. So you're already in this mood of like, Hey, I'm cool with having fun be the life of the party. Those are typically the people that end up on, up on stage in the first place. Okay. And then what hypnosis uh, will do and drunk people are even easier to hypnotize because they're already, their conscious mind is already checked out. Interesting. But what hypnosis will do is it's kind of like, let's say you go to a nightclub and you really want to dance, but you're embarrassed. Yep. So you're like, ah, I'm going to drink a little. And after a couple of drinks, all of a sudden you're dancing, right? Right. Hypnosis kind of does the same thing where you might initially be like, yeah, I want to have fun. I don't know. It's kind of corny. Blah, blah. But then after you relax yourself to a point, your mind opens up and then you, and then you'll go through the motions kind of like being drunk. So yeah, it's a, and only a certain amount of people will allow themselves to, to go through the whole motions. Um, but yeah, that, that's interesting. You've done it before. Well, well, well so, so with that said, is this, so I think, uh, I, Dom, I don't know what, what era are you a, an eighties kid, a nineties kid? Uh, yeah, I was, I'm uh, 35 right now. 35. Okay. So I, I got a, I got a few years on you, but you might appreciate it still. Do you, do you remember the cartoon show, the Flintstones growing up? Was it, Of course. Was, yeah. yeah. I, I just remember the old episodes of the Flintstones where, where Fred would get hypnotized and it, it would be like, oh, okay, it's just walking like a zombie and then they snap their fingers and now he's out of it. So, so my version of hypnosis is, is that, and, and maybe it is to a degree. I don't, I don't know, man. I don't let, let me, let me give you a formal introduction. Uh, Dom, the hypnotist is uh, not just doing this on the street, doing, doing jokes on people and pranks on people. He actually works with business owners, has an emphasis on salespeople and um and uh, integrates hypnosis into into the culture of the organization which which i want to hear a shitload about man dom and i don't know each other we're just meeting for the first time right now um this is when i'm starting to get those feathers in my cap where a pr agency actually reached out to me on on dom's behalf and i looked at it and i go fuck yeah all right this this show's going somewhere it. this show's going somewhere and you're all not right. the first I talk about that sometimes, Dom. Like I, I've, I've, I'm starting to get celebrities to come on that I didn't even know before. Oh, there we go. Yeah, these are feathers in my cap. So I like to I like to remind the audience uh, of where we've come from back in September with only a you know hand, a couple handfuls of downloads to where we're at now. But um, th- this is that case, and and the fact that you're in Vegas on top of it, that's one of my favorite damn cities. I'm there all the damn time. Oh, absolutely. Um, so welcome to the 2,000 percent raise, Dom. Yeah, man. Thanks for having me on. And like I said, uh, when I jumped on the call, I'm like, man, this guy looks familiar. His voice, you have a very um, uh, unique voice to yourself. It's like, you know, some people, it's a good radio voice. It sets you apart from others. I'm like, I've I've seen this guy somewhere. I don't know. It must have been on Instagram or something. And then when I looked at your page, I was like, oh yeah, I have have come across your stuff. So (laughs) did you you notice a slight lisp by any chance? Yeah, yeah, but you know, yeah. Well, but it's cool because again, it people remember that rather than just 
Hello. Dom, welcome to I, the I didn't know I had one. I didn't know I had one until I started promoting my shit on uh, Instagram when my, my hater comments will, will come out oh, in really? front of my list. But I go, fuck, I have a list. Like, I guess I do. I mean, it's so subtle. It's not like a big list, but, well, you know. And then my supporters will come in and argue with the haters and be like, dude, it gives you fucking character. I like your list. Don't try to get That's rid what of I'm it. saying. Yeah. But, but people will be like, dude, you, you, yeah, you, no, you, you, you have so much money, but you don't have enough for a uh, speech therapist. That's that's the go-to line. Dude, they, they they never fucking stop. They always, dude. I get, I have, I have like a couple videos that have millions of views, and there's just thousands of comments. There's thousands of just like, oh, you're a snake oil salesman. You're a charlatan. You're bald. You're this. You're that. And it's like, okay, <laughs> dude. It's uh, crazy, man. It is what it is, you know? Well, bro, and and it's like one of those things people are like, it, the snake oil salesman, exactly, dude, or the big mm-hmm. one, they, they used to wear the, the, you're a grifter. I'm like, what the fuck does that even mean? I had to literally, <laughs> yeah, yeah. literally look it up. Right. <laughs> Me go, too. Same, I've had that same thing. I'm like, what the fuck is a grifter? <laughs> exactly. I, I literally uh-huh. looked it up. Okay, con man. Okay, that makes sense. Right. All right, it makes sense why you're saying that, people. Just say con man, motherfucker. Anyway. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, but it's what's funny about the the Dom, and you'll probably appreciate this, is if you listen to him too much, it could so so okay. Yeah. So so for what I do, man, I I sold my company for a bunch of money. I started, I quit my job in corporate America, started this company for my kitchen table. And as I've gotten more popular now with social media, okay, I should probably put out some mentorship, some courses, maybe one-on-one mm-hmm. kind of shit. And I've never really done that previously. And I I'm financially you know, fine. So I, I'm, I'm independently wealthy at this point, so I don't need to need to do that. But I'm like right. hesitating on putting the shit out because of all the freaking haters been telling me that I'm only doing this shit to sell a course in the first place. Well, fuck what a conundrum because these 28 year olds that are building sales funnels that don't know shit and are selling courses, there's nothing to learn from them where I actually have something right. to learn and now I'm holding myself back. So you might say, well, just put it out there for free. And once you start putting the shit out mm. there for free, then it becomes there's no there's no perceived value and people don't really even take it right. seriously. And you need to kind of have it have a cost. So the baseline person entering it is taking it seriously enough and that they have the money and they're in a position where they could actually maybe do something with the information. Um, so as much as I like try to not let commenters and haters um, influence my decisions, I, I will say when I look at it from that perspective, I've, I've, I've fallen victim to it because I probably should have put this course out a year ago. You know what I mean? Well, I'll say, um, you know, one thing I've noticed with dudes who sell their companies, they, they become really wealthy. And I don't know if this is true for you, but they sell it, they feel great, they celebrate. And then a couple, you know, months go by and they're like, okay, what's next? Yeah. And, I, and I feel like, you know, if, if, what kind of company did you have before? It was an insurance brokerage firm. Okay. I used to sell insurance. So okay. did you have a lot of people working for you or not really? So, but yeah, but I had, I had that feeling of importance if that's where you're going with it, because yeah, I had, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, it was corporate insurance, employee benefits. I, I made a ton of money and it was, you know, private equity got involved. Yeah. yeah so yeah, it's that feeling of importance. And when yeah. you, when you lose that feeling, it's like, Hey, I want that feeling back. Cause sometimes that feels more, that feels better than even the money. Sometimes that, that attention, the, the, the importance factor. And then a lot of these guys will go and it's like, Hey, I'm going to start a coaching program. Not cause you need the money again. Right. You're, you're fine. You'll be good for probably the rest of your life. Yep. It's because you want that feeling of like mentoring people, the importance, the feeling you get when you help somebody change their life and they go, dude, yep. I did what you told me to do and I just doubled my revenue or I tripled, that, you know, whatever. Dude. So that's what it really is. So right. what I would say to that, because I've gone through that as well. When I, when I went from insurance to being a hypnotist, <laughs> oh my, even my, my best friends are like, what the fuck are you going to do with that? Like, this, guy's you know? <laughs> this guy's a fucking idiot. Yeah. And, uh, what, what, what helped me get over all that bullshit is just focusing on the lives that I've helped and, and all the people that I've, um, that I really have truly just changed their lives. Just complete 180 degrees and when i focus on that like all that other bullshit i'm just like whatever fuck you guys what kind of insurance were you in i did life insurance okay so sales started off uh yeah yeah i did uh sales and i I did uh i was working for a company called american income for about five years took a break uh tried some other things i I started a solar company that didn't go good and then I got back into insurance. I was like, okay, it's what I know how to do. Yeah. But I, I fucking hated it. I hated my life. I hated my job. And I would drive around every day like, dude, oh my God. Yeah. 
I need it. There's got to be something else. And then, well, you know. you're singing a tune right now to our listeners and, and I, people that follow my social media. There's that transition that people have tried to make from individual life insurance sales over, over to solar. And mm -hmm. um, what, what's interesting about it is, it, and I, I'm sorry for anybody in solar that I'm about to offend, but if you're if you operate solar with integrity and you've had success, this shouldn't offend you. It, you should look at your industry and know that, yeah, he's talking about them. He's not. Ta I'm not talking about you, the people that are doing it the right way. But I think I think part of the problem is people that have been on the life insurance side that it's a regulated industry. You got to do everything the right way. You can't right. say this. You can't. You know. You can't you know, solicit somebody. You got to get a license and exactly. And you go to solar and it's unregulated and there's scumbags just putting every, whatever commission they want into it. You almost, you know, the, the most successful people, you know, I put successful in air quotes are, are the people that aren't, aren't doing it the right way. And, right. um, in my position, my feeling is they're not going to be a long barrier. Enjoy it now, motherfuckers, all you solar motherfuckers, it's coming to an end. Just like it was mm -hmm. in 2007 for people fucking that were shady in the mortgage industry. Now, here we are in uh -huh. 2023. There's people that are in the mortgage industry that were still in it 20 years ago. Guess what? Those are the people that were able to pivot and do shit the fucking right way. So you solar motherfuckers that are doing it the wrong way right now, <laughs> you're going to have to fucking pivot at some point or else you're going to be on your ass. What are they doing? Like charging just a tremendous amount or well, lying well, about the numbers? Well, just the idea of, of anybody being able to walk up to your door and convince you that you're going to save money and never have an electric bill again and have financing ready for you to pay them six figures at times. And mm -hmm. then they do the math to figure out what's the minimum I could save you to make this sell. And my baseline that I have to charge for it is this, and I could build in whatever commission I want to still make this sale. That's right. crazy, dude. What if you were selling a million? Let's say you sent a five grand a month uh, life insurance policy to, to a wealthy woman that's a widow, and uh, she's sitting on $20 million of her husband's or, or you know, of hers now, and, 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 you're min and you were getting a 10% commission on it, Dom. But- if you sell it for eight grand, you get that 10% plus the extra three grand. That's what's happening right, in solar right, yeah, right that, now. That I mean, makes total sense. It's, you know, it should, yeah, it makes sense, man. It should be illegal to be able to just uh, upcharge people just for the sake of upcharging them, right? It's coming. I'm telling you right now, it's coming. And it, it, solar's got into, it's coming for sure. I think California already might have done something in this capacity, but um, oh, really? Yeah, yeah, it, it, yeah. it's coming. Um, That's anyway, wild. let's talk about you, man. This, this is freaking awesome, dude. This is first of all, first of all, how do you pronounce your last name? Bertoncini. Bertoncini. Okay. And, and, and what mm -hmm. percent Italian are you? So I did a 23 and me or whatever. What, oh, those shit. Things I'm and scared it was, to do uh, it. It was like, I'm 30, scared to do it. 30. Well, now, now knowing what I know now, I probably shouldn't have done it. <laughs> but, if you know what I mean? But, uh, uh, I, I was a third, uh, was Southern European. And then, you know, I'm also Mexican and like Spanish and stuff like that. So about a third. And then I have some British and all that kind of okay. stuff. So, okay. but I, you know, I'm, I'm more, I'm more Mexican or native American ish, like yeah. you know, America, Mexico, that whole Southern part of, <laughs> of, of the United States. And, uh, but nobody has an idea. I just look like a, I look like a freaking big white guy, bald head, right, you know, right. like nobody has an idea that I'm Mexican, <laughs> but I'm actually more Mexican than anything. Yeah. I think I'm 25% only because my grandpa is where the name came from and he, he came over on the boat. So we're just assuming he was a hundred percent and then nobody else was mm -hmm. Italian. So by the time it got to me, I'm thinking I'm 25%, but, but who knows? I'll probably find out I'm a little bit less. My, my brother got it done and, uh, <laughs> I got pissed at him. I go, listen, you got to clear that with people to, first of all, don't, don't tell me what you were, but beyond that, you got to clear this because you know, there might be some cold cases that get so, some cold oh, cases. Oh, that, yeah. My mom, my mom did a did her ancestry thing, and somehow, like on Facebook, I, I don't know exact. She found out she had a sister. Oh gosh, that was fifty years, no idea she existed. Wow. So apparently, my grandpa got my grandma pregnant, and then like within three, four, five, six months, he got somebody else pregnant. Oh. But he didn't stay. He didn't tell anybody. So my mom has a sister that's literally like three months younger than her, and that she just found this out like last year. Yeah, and she's fifty. You know, so it's like gotta be careful <laughs> with that stuff. 
I, I, you know what I mean? You know, you're, you're a hypnotist and we don't know each other, so I can't insert my my famous joke here, but I like to What's say, that? I, I like to say I'm half of another ethnicity. And anyway, anyway, so I'm going to leave it alone. Nah, I I, think I any know with that. any <laughs> ex-girlfriend listening right now knows the joke. Nah. <laughs> anyway, ma'am. So listen, dude. I, okay. So, so you leave life. And first of all, what, what, what you just told me there tells me a couple of things about you right off the bat. First of all, you worked at American Income Life and, and you had the job mm-hmm. for five years. Okay. Then you tried mm-hmm. something new in solar. You, you didn't like it. Then you were, you wanted to go back to back to life. And um, you just decided this isn't your calling. Now you, you, you had at least some moderate success, at least if, if you were, you know, if you were in that job for five years, I'm assuming you had, yeah, you, know, yeah. you were paying your rent to, uh, along the way there. Um, and you, it wasn't your calling, but you, but I know this about you already. You, you, you have, you have that drive to be a hustler. So yeah, yeah. Yeah. So at some point you said, okay, I, I got to do this hustle towards something I'm really passionate about. Um, and, 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 you know, to, Hey, you can't just wake up and go apply for hypnotist no. jobs. I mean, I mean, no, I mean, dude, I it, it was honestly, I call it divine intervention. Okay. God or universe or whatever. It was like, yo, you need to quit wasting your talents on this and you need to do this. And this is basically what happened is, uh, you know, I was selling insurance, making like 11, 12 grand a month, you know, making six figures, nice. you're comfortable, whatever. What year is this? And uh, what's that? What year is this? Uh, this is 2017, 18. Okay. Like what? After my first year, I always made six figures. Awesome. Uh, low six figures, 105, 120, 180 was like the most I ever made. And what kind of leads were you calling? I'm just, the only reason I'm asking these details is because of our audiences in this space. Oh, know. yeah. So, uh, the last time I was, I was the number one, uh, number two producer in the company and it was a uh, final expense leads. Okay. So I had a, I had like a, you know, 125, 135% contracts. And you, you know, I had a, somebody call, I go out to their house. This was before, this is before now. I think mostly people do phone sales. Okay. This is kind of in the period of transitioning from in person to phone, just cause that kind of generation of older people didn't really you know, it was just, I don't know. That's the way I was taught. It's like, you I, just go to the house. Dude, you know? I know so many people in that, that try to sell the life insurance as a cross sell to, um, to Medicare supplement leads. Uh-huh. You know what I mean, they'll, they'll go, so, so I go, dude, you're making like $8 on the Medicare supplement. Like, well, I make a little bit more than that. But the real thing is if that elderly person then turns around and buys a final expense or some kind of life insurance yeah, policy. Yeah, you make a thousand bucks, yeah. 800 bucks or But that's whatever. the thing though, bro. Like what you just said, I know people make, there's people making a half a million dollars doing this, people making 150 doing it. And then there's also people making 12 grand. Doing yeah, it. yeah, yeah. Well, with that, it's just a grind, yeah. man. I mean, with anything, right? It's just, you're, you're, you're grinding. I mean, I remember, you know, at one point in my insurance career, I literally worked 90 days straight wow. because I had a bunch of debt. Yeah. I had fucking all that. I was like, all right, time to grind. And I would just go. <laughs> From nine to nine, all day, knocking doors, doing this, doing that. Yep. Um, and, it, you know, it taught me a lot. I'm so thankful for the first five years of my, when I was 18, I started selling insurance to about 23. And I just learned how to hustle and just grind. Like, you know, it's one of those things, as everybody says, nobody can outwork me. It's kind of that mentality of just, yeah. all right, bro, we're just bootstrapping and we're just going. And a lot of times that's what that's what creates the success. It's not the talent. It's not the the good looks or this or that. It's just like your willingness to do whatever it takes as long as it's legal and it's moral and ethical. Right. But like just knocking doors till the sun comes down and you're still doing it. You know what yep. I mean? Yep. So I would drive around. The last year I was doing it, I was just doing it because I just, it was, I knew I was great at it right. and I knew I could make money, but I would just drive around and think to myself, dude, I hate this. I got to figure out something else. I got to figure out something else. Like there's got to be something else out there. But uh, you know, when you're making that kind of money and you got a baby on the way Ooh. and all these other factors, you're kind of like scared, right? Yep. Well then, uh, the reason I say divine intervention is because in uh, Christmas of 2018, my mom, uh, she actually does insurance as well. She has a state farm agency. She's okay. been doing that for 20 years, but cool. She uh, she bought me a hypnosis course as a Christmas gift, just for fun. <laughs> what, right? How old were you? How old were you? Like, uh, this is a uh, I was thirty, or I, I was twenty nine, going to be thirty. I think. Awesome. And uh, I, I'm she picturing went, my, you know, me giving my son when he was six like the magic the magic set that <laughs> that I bought at New York, right? New York exactly. Casino. Exactly. Like what? Well, what it was is my mom went to this seven day NLP hypnosis course, and it helped her so much. Just like remove a lot of her bullshit and her head and, and everything. Yeah. And she was like, dude, I went to this and I feel amazing. Like you got to come to it. Blah, okay. blah, blah. So she bought me the course 
And I was like, oh, this is cool. You know, it's like yeah. a two and a half day course. And I was like, all right, you know, I'll go to the course and learn a party trick or something, you know, be able to go like sleep or, right. you know, whatever. <laughs> so I go to the course and I had zero expectation. I was going to do this for a living. I wasn't like, fuck yeah, I'm going to be a hypnotist. I was just like, all right, I'm going to go to this two day course, clear out some of my bullshit and whatever. So I went and, um, man, in, in those two and a half days, I changed so, so much as a person. Like I physically felt different. Wow. And on that Monday I got out of the course and I was like, dude, this is the thing that I've been wanting to do. I just didn't know it. Right. Like this is the, every time when I drive around in my car thinking there's gotta be something else, like this is it. Yep. So I initially, uh, you know, I didn't know what I was doing. I was two and a half days out and like, I don't know what the fuck's going on. So I initially made a goal. I said, okay, six months or sooner. Mm -hmm. I just want to be able to transition to do this full time. And I don't, I don't need to make the same money. If I could just pay my bills. Cool. I'm happy with that. Yeah. Make like four grand a month. Cool. So I went out the first week and again, I didn't know what I was doing. So I didn't even charge anything. I just was, I just started putting on my Instagram, Hey, if anybody wants to do a free session, hit me up type of thing. Yep. So within the first week I worked with like 45, 50 people for free. Wow. And I started seeing results with people. Like people would be like, Oh wow, that was cool. And a lot of it was little like stuff you do, what are called convincers. We kind of do like little, little tricks or whatever. It's not like deep healing or deep mindset mm -hmm. stuff. It's just more basic stuff. So after the first week, I was like, oh shit, I have a knack for this. I'm actually really good at this. So suddenly my six month goal turned to three months mm. and I went out again, but this time I, 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 I grew a little bit more courage and I was like, all right, I'm going to do it for free, but in return, I want people to post their testimonials on their social medias. Oh. So I went out and within the matter of two weeks, I worked with a hundred people wow. and uh, it was two weeks to the day from the day I got out of that course, I woke up. And I had 10 appointments to go sell insurance. And I just literally, I could not physically get my body to go. My body was just like, no, dude, you're fucking done. And my mind was like, no, 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 we got to go make money. We got to go make And I was just like, I can't. So I messaged my assistant who's actually still with me till this day. And I said, look, call these people. And I said, tell them that's it. I said, I'm never selling another insurance policy ever again in my life. And I said, I'm done. Let me chime in real quick there on something, man. Yeah, yeah. When, when you have that moment as a salesperson and you're on that way to the appointment and it's the same freaking appointment that two years ago you would have been excited about and you're like, oh, mm -hmm. fuck. And all you're thinking about is the objection he's going to have or whatever he's going <laughs> to say. And it's going to be like the repeated record going back and forth in your head. And then you get there and you realize it's a human being. It's not their fucking fault, but you're holding your mm -hmm. own experiences against them at that point. Ding, right. ding, 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 ding. Time to get a new fucking job, dude. Time to get a new right. fucking job. I agree, man. And, um, and, uh, that's what it was, is just like seeing the same person in just a different form and yeah. the same thing over. And, and let's be honest though. Like most jobs are repetitive. Yeah. I don't care who you are. Everybody's yeah. we're kind of doing the same thing every day. Right. So it is what it is, but um, and it's funny after that, after I told her to call everybody, I call my little brother who's like, what, eight years younger than me or something. Yeah. I was like, yo, I was like, I need your help. I'm going to become, I'm going to be a full-time hypnotist from this point forward. I was like, I'm going to hook you up. I'll give you like two sessions for 200 bucks. Mm. And he's like, oh man. And he's fucking 20 something, 22 year old kid at times. Like, dude, I don't really have that much money. I was like, come on, bro. Just fucking help me out, please. Right. He's like, all right. So he did it. And then I call my sister. I give her the same pitch. I'm like, yo, I'm gonna be so I made like 400 bucks my first day. I just wow. called my, my brother and my <laughs> sister and hassled them for, for cash. And then, awesome. you know, and then I just, the first year was just kind of like trying to figure it out, figure it out. Mm -hmm. And then I got the idea because when I was doing final expense, I used to run my own Facebook ads. Okay. So I'm like, you know what? Why don't I just run ads? For hypnotism and i've literally been running the same ad for three years three and a half years and it and it fucking works it wow. works like gold wow same, same thing so and i built an entire you know we've got like 15 people on my team that just are like therapists sales people and stuff yeah. like that that doesn't include our marketing team video editors blah, blah blah and i've built a built an entire like organization off of one advertisement that is incredible kind of man that is incredible <laughs> and you're you're gonna get a bunch of ads people like my dms are always filled with people offering you ways to do it but you can be oh, more yeah. efficient with your ads you're, what, what, right. what's your cost per click what's your cost per click shut the fuck up everyone has exactly. a fucking way to do it better listen he no. has a successful business it's working he's been running the same ad for three years don't chime in right. with your bullshit like 
I agree, man. It's it's so true. It's just true. It's like, it's funny because I do have a marketing team that I work with. Yeah. And I look at the numbers and I'm like, yeah, mine is kind of better, but you know, I still keep it because it's good to have like not just all my eggs in one yeah. basket. But I'm like, my one ad, and it's just me grabbing somebody's hand and going sleep, yeah. and they kind of go into a trance or whatever. Okay. That's all it is. But people see that yeah. and they're like, ooh, they're either yeah really interested or they're like this guy's a fucking idiot he's this is fake this is like um, fake martial arts you know pressure points this is silly and that damn ass freaking instagram they make their ads or facebook and instagram make their ads manager just complicated enough where there's this room for third parties to be in this space. Right. You know what if I mean? I can't just make it easy. Exactly. Right? I tried to run my own ads for a podcast once, and I freaking forgot to turn it off. And I go, why do I keep getting this bill? Why does this one podcast uh, have thousands of more views than everyone else? Wow, that must have been a really good episode of fucking. I uh, forgot <laughs> I ran this fucking ad for two months and forgot to turn it off. My bad. <laughs> Excuse me while I interrupt myself. Go to 2000percentraise.com and check out all the cool shit we got there, including our merchandise, including our upcoming events, oh, and including our membership. That's a networking group you want to be a part of. Trust me, and it's not very fucking expensive. And did I mention it gives you super discounted access to our next event that's coming up October 12th and 13th? It's a mastermind in Las Vegas. 2000percentraise.com check it out so listen man let, let's talk about the, the the business aspect of this not 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 um not how you built your business but what what is your value proposition when you when you ap- approach an organization on you know why they should even fuck with you because i got to imagine that it's not just you having to prove that you're the best at what you do you you got to prove that there's proof of concept here they're like who the fuck are you yeah, yeah. i'm not even i'm not even thinking this way it's like if you started to tell me hey start having hummus for breakfast i mean I, I, no you know yeah 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 no it is and i tell people all the time like dude we do multiple six figures a month in a in an industry where people think it's fake like imagine <laughs> that i'm <laughs> like dude if i did a real business holy shit i'd be making fucking millions a month already fuck yeah, you know right but uh you know what it is l- luckily um with our clients, uh, a lot of it is one-on-ones, right? So people come in, they either work with me or somebody on my team. Yeah. And then um, what what ends up happening is, so I'll tell you an interesting story. And this is kind of one of the basis, is, basis for what we do. Um, and it's very, very interesting. And it's, and it's kind of unbelievable. But in the NFL season of 2021, mm-hmm. I've been working with this gentleman. Uh, his name's Juwan Williams. He's a, he was a cor- cornerback for the, um, for the New England Patriots. Mm-hmm. Now he's on the Minnesota, Minnesota Vikings. So I was working with him. He's like fourth string or whatever. And we started working, you know, in like preseason and throughout the season. Well, about halfway through the season, he finally got his opportunity for his first start. Right. Cause we were doing the mental work. Plus he's doing all the physical work. So he comes to me, he's like, yo, Dom, I got my first start. He's like, I'm super excited, but also I'm, I'm nervous as hell. Like, he's like, bro, if there's anything we haven't done yet, if there's any tricks up your sleeve, like now's the time to do it. Right. Yep. So I'm like, all right. So what what we did is we took, you know, when you're in the NFL and you play a new team every week, you got to re- try to remember their playbook the be- as best as possible, right? So what we did is we took the plays, I put them in a hypnosis recording, and then I told them, all right, I want you to loop this throughout the night, eight hours a night, just a half an hour recording, just telling you the plays over and over and over. Like, mm-hmm. all right, trips wide, they're going to run this, or fucking five wide, they're going to do that, yep. you know, whatever. And, and, and it's funny because up until that point, I didn't even believe in sleep hypnosis. I was like, ah, that shit doesn't work. You're fucking sleeping. How does it, how does it actually help your subconscious mind? Right. But I figured, I was like, all right, it's not going to hurt. So let's just do it. So he listened to it Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, he goes out and plays. He messaged me after the game. He's like, dude, I've never been more in tune with what the other team was going to do. And he's like, it's, li- it's like, I knew what they were going to do before they did it. Right. So I'm thinking, oh fuck, it worked, right? There's the sense of relief, um, and then I and then I started thinking, okay, maybe there is something to this whole sleep hypnosis right. thing. So it was maybe a few weeks or a few months, I don't remember, but uh, the thought it was in my head, like, hey man, like let's try out the sleep hypnosis thing, but for for me, and let's do it around creating abundance, right, financially. Yeah. So I go I, I go on YouTube, I find this video, it's got millions of views. 
all these comments and people are like, yeah, you know, I started listening to this and then out of nowhere, I made two grand and 10 grand and I had my biggest month ever and just thousands of comments. And I was like, at first I'm thinking these are fake. These are bots, yeah, you know, they, right. this can't be real. Yeah. But I went and I would check on people's profiles and they're real people posting real content. Wow. So I'm like, all right, I'm going to do it. Fuck it. I got nothing to lose. Right. So I started listening to it on a Tuesday. And by Sunday, we had our biggest week ever at the time by about 50%. Mm. So 50% more, 50 more clients, boom. Now, uh, this was great. The problem was though, is at the time I didn't have a team like I do now and it was just me. And so I couldn't, like 50% more clients is great, but also now I got 50% more work, right? So I actually stopped listening to it because it was too powerful. I was like, all right, this is too much. I got to slow down. And I just left it at that. Well, then... A few months went by and I, and I had the thought, I'm like, you know what, why don't I, I'll just create my own sleep hypnosis, but make it to where it's very specific about like, hey, I'm going to make more money, but not working more. I'm going to do it with putting in the same effort or even less. So I put out this, uh, I created this recording. I put it on YouTube, Instagram, and within a couple of days, people are like, oh my God, you know, deals are closing, my appointments, my calendar's booking up, all these great things. Yeah. And then other people were saying that they couldn't understand it. And it sounded like the file was corrupted. So I was thinking like, all right, maybe the, maybe I fucked it up on the editing or whatever. So whatever, I didn't think of, the, of it. Well, then a little bit later after that, I decided I'm like, I'm going to start giving people this sleep hypnosis because I work with business owners and salespeople and they want to make more money. I'm going to start giving this to them when they join as a part of like their little homework. Like, Hey, start listening to this every night. Right. Yep. So I started giving it to our clients. Same thing happened. People getting great results. And then uh, we're going to the craziest thing ever. This, uh, one of my clients, she messaged me one day and she's like, Dom, she goes, um, is something wrong with the recording? And I said, no, why? What's up? And she goes, well, the first couple of days I could hear it, but now it sounds like it's in a different language. Like I, I can't understand it. It sounds like it's corrupted. So I said, you know, I've heard this before. Send me, screen record it, send it to me. So she screen records it, sends it to me. I'm listening to it and I'm like, nah, I can hear it. It sounds normal to me, you know, whatever. Yeah. Well, then about an hour later, she messaged me back and she goes, she goes, oh my God. Uh, she goes, I think I'm going crazy. And I said, what? And she goes, I just showed my partner your recording of your hip hypnosis. We're in the same exact room. We're listening to the same exact thing and she can hear it perfectly fine, but I can't understand a word. Hmm. And it sounds like it's in a different language. Wow. Something in like, what the fuck is going on? You know, like right. how, how is that even possible? You, you can hear something then you can't hear it. That's weird. So I said, okay, let's talk about it in our session. So we, we next, you know, I do all my work over zoom. Yeah. So I hop on and I'm like, I got to see this for myself. Mm. So I show her, I, I share my zoom recording, uh, the recording through zoom. And sure enough, I can hear it as clear as you can hear me right now. And she's on the other side saying, I can't understand it, Dom. I could read the captions on the screen, but I can't, I can't get it. So then I just went intuitively with what I figured was going on. Mm -hmm. And it turns out she had all these like fears around success and limiting beliefs and things like that. Like if she became successful, people would judge her and her friends and family would be jealous of her and she would, you know, get kicked out of the tribe and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And she wouldn't be able to handle it. She'd blow all her success, whatever. So one by one, we went through, cleared everything out. And then 45 minutes later, boom. I turn on the recording and she can hear it as clear as day. Wow. So, and then that phenomenon has happened with hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people now oh, shit. Um, where they start listening. And here's, here's what's, what's really interesting is I have many clients that are multi, multi-millionaires, you know, even clients that are more successful than I am and they'll start listening to it. And within a couple of days, it starts distorting on them and they're thinking like, fuck, I didn't think I had any like blocks yeah, around this. Right. And then we find out what it is, you know? Yeah. Wow. So that's kind of the, one of the basis, basis of what we do. I would say a third, maybe 40% of the people that come into our program, when they listen to that, they have that same experience. And what's even crazier, I had clients create their own uh, affirmations on this app and they start listening to it. And within a few days, they couldn't even understand their own words, their own voice, their own language wow. because their mind started distorting the sound. So, Wait, so what does the, yeah, app, very do? the app just replace things? while well, like it's from your phone yeah you just you, let's say you're like okay i'm a millionaire and i'm you know super confident or yeah. whatever you want to put you put the affirmation and you play it and it just will play until your phone dies basically so you just leave the phone so on while you're asleep it. or whatever yep okay yep and is people your did that and it, what's and, the is this a third party or uh, uh the parrot yeah it's called the parrot app gotcha interesting 
I have an app too that, that I launched a couple months ago where you can actually go on there. If you go into the app store and you just type in Dom the Hypnotist, yep. um, you can get the free download of the sleep hypnosis that I'm talking about. Okay. And you, people can, can give it a go. And then if they want to upgrade, there's like a $44 membership where um, it's super inexpensive. It's uh, They get four calls a week with one of my hypnotists throughout the week to help people oh, clear cool. these out, out and they get access. There's a whole program that's helps people like go through their own head and clear out these different blocks and stuff. So it's really, really fascinating well, stuff. That's awesome, man. L listen, <laughs> let me know how that goes as you go because because <laughs> I've, I've noticed in social media and the podcast space, it's very easy to get people to do shit for free. Once you start charging a right. nickel, <laughs> it becomes, the right. numbers get a lot wider. Yeah, hundred percent. Look, I charge twenty grand to work with me as of now. By the if somebody's watching this, it could be different by next week. You know, yeah, it could be right. fifty. I, I don't know. But, yep. Um, and you know, and, and then we have other hypnotists you can work with at a lower price and everything. Mm -hmm. But it's like, look, bro, if you don't have forty four dollars to fucking, I had somebody uh, go in the app the other day and they posted. I started listening to the sleep hypnosis, and then now it sounds like gibberish. And now you said in yeah. order to fix it, I got to upgrade. And da da da. This feels like a bait and switch. And I'm like. Look, bro, if you don't have $44 to invest in yourself, I don't even want you in the program. I don't care right. about your 44. Yeah. Honestly, John, the reason why I created, we used to sell that program for two grand. The The true reason I started selling it for $44 a month is because peop, there's a lot of broke fucking people out there. Yeah. And a lot of people are suicidal because they yeah. don't have the money and their relationships are fucked up. So I wanted right. to give people an opportunity <laughs> where if you are sca scraping by like $44, go into the goddamn program and fix yourself and then Brother. fuck it. I don't even care. You cancel it after the first month. I don't give a shit. Like that does not fucking pay my you bills. You know so what I'm saying? Funny, dude. So, Dude, I have a fucking, I do a thing at 50 bucks a month and it includes all this shit and it's listed right there on the freaking checkout page. You can see this shit. You start DMing me with, the first question I'll answer, hey, did you see this page? You asked me a second question, <laughs> dude. I'm not answering it. Don't fucking do it. Like I like and I it's 50 bucks, bro. Yeah, and it's like maybe somebody <laughs> like, that comments on my Instagram all the time and it's all usually positive. And now they're asking me eight questions. Like, oh, motherfucker, are you just trying to like hang out with me right now, dude? It's 50 bucks yeah, a month. Right. Oh, exactly. Dude, well, how many members do you have in it so far? Well, we just rolled it out. So we're right at I think 107 at the time at the time we're filming oh, this, nice. but now I'm starting to push it harder. So by the time this actually airs, it should be more than that. So it's oh, like, nice, I'm doing nice. everything organic, bro. Everything organic. We're not doing I'm not doing really sales funnels or any of that shit. So you basically had to be <laughs> to even know about it. Yeah, you gotta pay attention to Instagram. Right? Yeah. Yeah. No, that's cool, man. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. cool though. It's no, cool it's, though. Uh, we're doing an event in uh we talk after the show, but you maybe you could make an appearance at I can't pay you twenty grand, but we, maybe we can make when, an when is that? It's October twelfth and thirteenth in uh, in Vegas at the Trump and uh, the Plaza. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah I, I, I'll, I'll just stop. It's by, all you know. entrepreneurs and networkers. You, you know what? It'd be good exposure for you because you get in the room in front of those people. And it sounds like you're doing just fine, but but since you already live there, if you want to, see, I'll give you a little introduction. Yeah, look, and, if I can come in and, and give a sales pitch, you don't you don't got to pay me anything because I'll tell you what, I'll exactly. make a lot more than twenty grand. <laughs> I'll make a lot more than twenty grand. I believe that. Actually, I want you to hypnotize uh, the audience and tell them to uh, give me twenty grand, Dom. That's my point. Yeah, yeah right. Exactly. That's funny. Exactly. What, are you selling something there? No, or? no. So that's the whole damn thing, man. With with what I'm doing with two thousand percent raise membership it, it's it's uh it's really a networking group yeah there's a price point mm -hmm. to be in but i want the right people in those rooms yeah it's, we yeah, have, right we have a telegram group that i broadcast stuff on we have a, a group zoom call every month um which is valuable shit um and then you get hugely discounted um um tickets to to these events that we do and what's cool about the events is that it's not like it's not like one of those things. Oh, it's only 59 bucks to come. And then the whole time they're trying to sell you a fucking shit. That's 20 grand. It's, it's no, the price, right, is the right. price. everybody's VIP. Um, so oh, that's cool. Yeah. We just, I just got this off the ground. So it's going, it's going really good. It's a lot of fun. I don't know. It's not like, a. <laughs> if I wasn't independently wealthy, I, I could, I could tell you why values like this don't exist out there because usually when people uh, that work as hard at something, they're expecting to like make money and get paid. And I probably will monetize this for myself at some point, but, but as it is right now, it's really for the good of the people, buddy. It's making me feel, yeah, yeah. making me feel important. giving me that pep in my step again, yeah, you know, exactly. That, exactly. That's, you know? A, that's the thing, right? It's like, yeah, yeah. It's funny. Cause I've been, uh, I've been kind of, um, you know, wanting to get out of doing one-on-ones and, and stuff. But mm -hmm. at the same time, the feeling that you get when somebody goes, dude, like I, I one of my best friends, he, he does solar, right? Yeah. And three years, two and a half years ago, 
I got out of this course, this other course I went to, and I was like, yo, I learned this crazy shit. I got to show you. Like, yeah. I don't even tell people about that because I start going to that. People think I'm a fucking kook. But, yep. um, you know, I was like, yo, let's do this thing. So he was doing like $4 million a year at the time. Mm-hmm. And he had this belief about, you know, that uh, commercial deals are hard to land. Mm. So I said, okay, close your eye. We weren't even on Zoom. I was just on the phone. I was like, all right, close your eyes. Yeah. Do this, do that, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And here we are this year, he'll do $100 million, over $100 million wow. Um, wow. from, and he 20X his, his income. You know, I've, I've actually helped a lot of solar guys. Holy shit, dude. I've had people come in, they're barely scraping by, then boom, hundreds of thousands Damn. a month. And like I said, my buddy, and just all kinds of different people. So mm. when you, when you, uh, when you help people double, triple, five, 10, 20 X their income yep. in a short time span, right. it's one of the best, it's like a drug, you know, you're they're like, Oh my God, dude, thank you so much. I can retire my wife. I can fucking Boom. do this. I can do that. Yeah. Thank you so much, Dom. You're the fucking man. You know, it's like, it gives you that sense of like, yeah. ah, it's really cool. I'm a man. I'm the man. <laughs> dude. So I'll get DMS from people thanking me. Hey, I quit my job. I started my own LLC and all this shit. And, and I'd get these DMS on a pretty, pretty regular basis. And it's like feather in the cap, feather mm-hmm. in the cap, feather in the cap. But, uh-huh. but the one that really got me when I really said, I'm doing something fucking good out here. I made a real because so many W-2 employees are haters on me. Dude, you're such an asshole keeping down the working man. And I, so I put a reel out there. I go, listen, motherfuckers, if you're a top sales guy at, a, at an organization, you think you're overpaid, you're probably underpaid. Go out into business for yourself. You're going to make a bunch of fucking money. More than you're getting right, right there. You couldn't imagine. And you're building equity in yourself. But listen, man, right. if you're a cop, I'm not telling you to quit your job. You're a cop. No, no, Keep no. Keep being a cop. Right. Dom, you'll never fucking believe it. After I put that reel out there, a bunch of cops started DMing me. No, motherfucker, you got it all wrong. We're like, I want to quit too. Dude, we're following you because of our union contracts. We have room for side hustles. A lot of us are going to retire in our 50s. Trust me, you got a lot of cops following you, buddy. Ah, I'm like, that's a good oh. point. I didn't even think about that. I'm like, holy shit, dude. And Dom, it was at that point that I realized I'm actually making a fucking difference. The DMs had already been coming in for a while, but that one got me, man. That one got me. And I'm like, holy shit. So I started doing this thing and I'm still doing it now where I I go buy, buy, buy a thousand bucks worth of steak and bring it to a random police department and say, keep it up, fellas. Oh, that's cool, man. People like that. It's a good, it's a good, uh, hell yeah. yeah, and And I'm not just doing it for, I'm not just doing it for content. Yeah. Of course I make a social media clip about it, but no, dude, this is fucking cool, man. You got guys that are 22 years old that decided to go to, to the police academy and be a cop. And then they're realizing in their thirties and forties, shit, man, I wish I would have, you know, started a business. Like, you know, that you don't know when you're 22, what kind of mindset you're going to, you're going to be at when you're right. in your thirties or where you're capable. Being a cop is hard, dude. You're dealing with the lowest of the low on a daily basis, really? drug addicts, crackheads, prostitutes, pimps, yep. people beating their wives. Like, Jesus Christ, dude, shout out to those guys. Cause exactly. I don't think I could do that job. Well, exactly. And a lot of, and a lot of police fo- state depart, a lot of police forces will be in a damn position that, um, like it's the golden handcuffs because their union benefits mm-hmm. are so damn good because the retirement's so good. And they're going to think to themselves that they have more to offer this world or could do so much more in the private sector. But how do you walk away from this job with your wife and your kids and everything else? Cause, cause unlike corporate America, Hey, I could go try to be an entrepreneur. And if it doesn't work out, I could probably go back. Doesn't fucking yeah, you, work that way. If you're a cop, you can't do that. Yeah. 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 So this whole you're promotion true. of cops following me with the side hustles and everything else, man, it's been a feather in my fucking cap, bro. I really, I really, that's cool, it. man. No, it's, it's the best feeling in the world. Yeah. So fuck all those people that are like, yeah. Oh, you're charging. Oh, this, oh, that's like, exactly. bro, I'm giving you free game on all my fucking reels. Right. You want exactly. free information? It's all there. Go to my YouTube. Yep. But if you want the real shit, if you want me to help you one-on-one or yep. send something, you've got to pay. Yeah. And like yeah. you said, if they don't pay, they won't even, they won't even get any value out of it anyways. So, so, so switching gears here before I'm looking at the time here, I want to, I want to make sure I ask you this and it's obviously, (laughs) it's obviously for purely selfish reasons. Could something like claustrophobia on an airplane be hypnotized out of you? Yes. A hundred percent. I don't do phobias personally. Um, uh, but it will. So this is what I would do if I was you. Mm -hmm. Find somebody who is a specialist in phobias. Okay. So th- there's a lot of great hypnotists out there and a lot of them are generalists, meaning that they're so, I don't want to say desperate, but they're so hungry for business that they'll take anything that comes their way. Oh, wow. you want to quit smoking? Okay, cool. You want to wait, you want, you want to do this? You want to do that? Gotcha. They'll, they'll help you with a little bit of everything, mm. but they're not really 
great at one thing. Um, that's why that's all we do is like what I mentioned, helping business owners and salespeople, you're stuck. You feel like you got more, but you're just, you're there. You know, you got more potential. Okay. Boom. We'll get you there. That's the only thing I do. I don't do weight loss. I don't do anything else. I don't do smoking phobias, nothing. Right. So I would, uh, go on, uh, Google or Yelp or whatever, and just look up hypnotist that specializes in phobias okay. and you'll find somebody and then, yeah, but 100%, um, you can 100 percent so you, you as long as it's somebody who knows what they're doing yeah, yeah yeah you know what's you know this reminds me of a weird analogy here though bro so i thought all optometrists and all ophthalmologists were like the same i had the worst case you haven't been following me down but i have the my followers on the worst case of pink eye that you'd ever see i had it like for two months i literally they said it was the third worst case of conjunctivitis they've ever seen in the, out of that office holy shit that's crazy and i had to literally go to not just an optometrist i had to go to an ophthalmologist who was also a cornea specialist and if i would have oh, wow, wow. and if i would have just went to an optometrist they would have taken the work man they would have taken the work but it wouldn't have went the same way i would probably would have had a lot of discomfort that i didn't end up having in because of because of the, some of the techniques they did and what you're saying right now makes all the damn sense in the world man you know yeah, you're you're a hypnotist. You're not going to go you're, to the optometrist to have your yeah no yeah. Well, dude, there, there's, there, I mean, how many? If you're a hypnotist and that's what your job is for a living, how many hypnotists are in a fucking position to turn away business? They're, they're, yeah, dude, I turn away way more business than I accept. It's fucking insane. Yeah. Like we get 800 applications a week. That doesn't even include wow. like all the hey, can you help me with it? It's like it's insane. So. um yeah, we, we turn away more people than we accept. That's for sure. Well, and I'm, and and I'm saying the other spectrum of that, the, the people that you were mentioning that, that are really generalists in nature, which, which a lot of you probably are, it sounds like, but, 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 but them are, they're, they're not, they, they got to pay their bills, you know, and they're not, not yeah, everyone's yeah. in the which spot. I, I understand. Yeah. Yeah. And they, and look, it doesn't mean that it won't work. It's just like, it might be like 80% of the time it works, 70% of the time. So they could get you results. Maybe, maybe not. But when you have that guy, that's like, dude, I have helped a thousand people with phobias of flying. Okay. That's the guy I'm going to pay. Not and I, I'm going to pay you triple. Yeah. I don't care. I'll pay you top dollar to help me get rid of this. Cause this is going to help me so much in my life. Yeah. Like I'm cool with paying. And mine's more amount, claustrophobia you know? than flying. It just bothers me when I'm on the damn smaller airplanes. Cause the claustrophobia kicks in. I'm not really worried about flying. Like, like, but I could control it like in a car or something. I could roll down a window. With right. Like, you know what I mean? So yeah, there's definitely something in there that, that popped up for you that, uh, they can help. Uh, when did that start happening? <laughs> I'll just tell you the truth. I've always had claustrophobia, but uh, two years oh, okay. two years ago during COVID, uh, I had a little incident down in uh, Florida where if you get arrested during uh, <laughs> if you get arrested during COVID and you're from out of state, they they treated you uh, anyway. I, I was put in solitary confinement because not because of anything I did. It was ah. all dropped. It was thrown out. But I spent 40 hours in the smallest damn cell with no magazines, no TV. I didn't know if it was nighttime or daytime. There's no freaking clock. They just what they throw me a bologna sandwich and I take I take my time eating it and play with the fucking bread because I have no idea how long right. I've been in here Past for. Time. Yeah. So ever since then I've been fucking weird. Like, does that make sense? That's what what with, with your eye when you hit uh when you uh, mess up your eye, what when was that recently? So the eye was in um, June. Uh, 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 there's a comedian that I'm friends with named Bob Mennery that I was letting use my condo in L.A. And suddenly when I went back, I, I, I slept in my bed. No, suddenly I had pink eye, Bob. What the fuck was happening? Uh, here? Like, did you, was there something you got blindsided by at that time in your life? Uh, what do you mean? Just like some random like, whoa, what the fuck was that kind of life uh, incident around June leading up to that point? Leading up to the pink eye? Yeah, yeah. Oh, you're tying in the pink eye with the claustrophobia, bro? No, 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 no. Just usually, no, no, no. I mean, maybe, but usually when it could be an outside circumstance, like you get fucking mud in your eye, you know, or whatever, whatever Bob is messing with. But yeah. a lot of times when we have physical problems, it's something like mental that's going on that's manifesting itself into your physical body. And so usually with eye problems, it's like you, you were blindsided by something. Interesting. Like, oh, shit, I didn't see Interesting. That yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Um. I have some stress. I have like a fucking. I don't want to give the person any any uh knowledge of a nod here, but yeah, I have yeah. like somebody that fucking stalks me, and it's been a big stressor in my life the last year and a half. Um. And it won't go uh -huh. fucking way. And uh, I'm wondering, <laughs> did that cause the <laughs> did that cause the pink? <laughs> Bro, if that's the first thing that comes to your mind, it most likely is. That's the old you know? dude. That's again. The old 
you're kind of being blindsided. This person's stalking you. You can't see them. You know what I mean? Like they're, mm. they're this weird kind of, you see what I'm saying? So a lot of, uh, you know, you, you different things, right? You get headaches. There's a reason for it. And you can get rid of headaches in the matter of seconds when you know how to do it. You don't got to take pills and all this other bullshit, but, really? um, yeah, usually when you have a physical problem like that, it's always something your mind going on in your mind. That's you're, you're not addressing and therefore it's coming out. It's like a ch your check engine lights on. Yo, I've had, I've had people that have been disabled for 10 years mm. because their back is fucked up and they can't, they've had five surgeries, chiropractors, physical therapists, and they do all these things and, and they can't do anything. And in a matter of 10, 15 minutes, they go through and they clear out whatever the thing they're holding onto subconsciously. Yep. And then boom, suddenly they're touching their toes and they're, you know, yeah. whatever. So it's, it's fascinating stuff, but, uh, wow. yeah, it's probably the person that's, is it a guy or a girl? Uh, I'd rather not give the person any kind of credence because you know, they follow all my shit and whatever. It's oh, terrible. Yeah. But, uh, no, it's, it's a human being for sure. And it's yeah. unwarranted and uncalled for. So it's, it's just, it's just, a you forgot, like you're walking down the street, you just got a constant heckler, heckle, heckle. Oh, really? <laughs> Basically, but not, not physical, not, not literally, but yes. Just on your pages and stuff. Yeah. It's terrible. It's terrible. But yeah, no, that's really the only point of stress I have in my life, to be honest with you. I, I just kind of look at my life and everything's pretty damn good. And uh, for the most part, you know, people around me are good. I think, um, you know, I think the last few years as I've elevated things, you start to lose people that maybe that were parts of your life that aren't kind of, you know, with your, you know, your success kind of, you know, sometimes people aren't meant to be along for the ride or they don't want to be either. And they're going to their own direction, you know, so friendships change and all that but for the most part i think everything's been pretty damn positive in my life you know my uh my do you really want to get rid of this stalker out of your life yes yeah yeah so how, how much time you got <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I, I, you, you got want, 30 minutes 30 right now i'm so no yeah yeah right now no way huh uh, no 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 we can cut it yeah we'll cut it you don't have to record it and we can do it and you'll find out exactly why you have a stalker really and I know it seems a hundred percent. I know it seems out of your control and like there's nothing you can do and it's not my fault. Yeah. There's something going, there's something in your head that's keeping this person here. I'll give you, I'll give you an example. Um, the, and I can say this cause she's cool with me saying okay. it. Um, this woman that works for me, uh, last year, she, she was working for me part time and, and she was kind of like trying to make her business go, but it wasn't working this, that, and the other. And you know, when, when my people start having things come up in their lives, we'll always pause. Okay. What the fuck's going on? We go into their subconscious, we clear it out. So she was telling me about, you know, she kept saying, oh, man, I got all these toxic people in my life. Mm. I got all these toxic people, toxic people. And that's a huge red flag for me. Like, yo, we got to address this. Right. Okay. So we always take the standpoint of every, every person in our life is like a reflection of something going on internally. Mm. And it's, it's there to kind of tell us something. Mm. So I said, look, you're, you're creating all these toxic relationships. Cause I don't have toxic relationships. All my friends are fucking amazing. My family's amazing. Everybody. Right. So why do you, so we go through this process and, um, what we discovered is that when she was four years old, she didn't realize this as an adult, but at four years old, she realized that she helped her dad overcome his temper and his anger, right? So she took this toxic person and helped him change. So it gave her kind of like, we're talking about that sense of like, wow, I did that. I'm important. You know, they give her the sense of uh, accomplishment. So unconsciously without her realization throughout her whole entire life, she would always attract these toxic people in her life because she wanted to like fix them, right? So anyways, we, we let it go, we remove it. Within one week, okay, her boyfriend she was with for six years, they broke up and then she, she'd been with them six years. He's like the step kid, stepdad to their kids. Her business partner she was in, they, they got into like a physical altercation or something and boom, that, that left. And then she had one more person, like her cousin or somebody. All of a sudden, all these three people just magically disappeared. Now here's where it gets more interesting. And I know you and other people listening, to this might be like, this is all bullshit. I don't know, but, but just have an open mind. Okay. Okay. Cause I, I'm, I have nothing to lie about. Yeah. Like, this is just what it right. is. Right. If anything, this probably makes me look crazy. So whatever. <laughs> like my, but, uh, like my stalker. <laughs> so, yeah, exactly. <laughs> well then, you know, maybe like six, eight weeks, you know, after she's like, dude, my fucking ex is just stalking me. Like he's fucking, he shows up at the bar with them, like doing, you know, out on a date or just hanging out with friends. And he just shows up there and he's at my house and this and this and that. And I said, look, 
you are creating that in your life. She's like, no, I'm not. No, I'm not. It's him. It's him. It's him. And I said, you know, you know the rules around here. We are the creators of our reality. If he's there, he's something trying to tell you. So anyways, she, I was like, okay, just fucking pretend. Pretend that I'm telling you the truth. She's like, okay. So we go through and she's like, okay. Blah, blah, blah. And she goes, I think that I kind of like am subconsciously kind of keeping him in my life because I feel so guilty for breaking up with them because of my kids and this and this and that. So whatever, right? So we release it. I kid you not, dude, within three, four, five days, this motherfucker disappeared off the map. Really? He, he right. Dude, Instagram deleted, Facebook deleted. And a month after that, she was looking for like places to buy or rent or whatever. And she goes, she's like, oh my God, I found the old house that we he, that he owns that we used to live in. It's up for rent. This dude literally just disappeared from fucking San Diego. <laughs> like, oh my God. He just, well, good for her. So That's good. You know, it was it a coincidence? I don't know. Yeah. But again, because she felt that way, she was kind of keeping him in there. And, and uh, there was there was something that happened that kind of caused all that. But yeah. uh, I don't go into that. But yeah, it's just well, uh, that, that, there, that, that became in, mind. Over, see, I thought you were going to say just mind over matter. Like, who cares? Just don't zone it out, which I'm sure there's a technique no, around no, no. that, too. Right. Yeah. If, yeah. You could like totally. But it, what's happening is there's something in your subconscious mind. Mm -hmm whatever it may be and you 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 will be mind blown when you figure it out and you go oh my god dude this makes so much fucking sense and even when you figure it out and you clear it you might doubt it like i don't know if this is actually going to work i don't know and then suddenly the calls will stop yeah. the instagram messages will stop yep. the, the the showing up at random places will stop and and that person will be gone from your life it's it's the craziest thing dude well well i have had a few friends tell me i'm overreacting to the whole situation and it doesn't really matter hey dude you're a star now buddy it, co it comes with it and and mm -hmm. i had one one friend particularly <laughs> saying just you want that to exist because anyone that comes across it is be like yeah dude he's got a stalker <laughs> you see you see what i'm saying i don't want it i do not want it oh shit subconsciously you kind of want it to exist you see what i'm saying i'm trying I to already make knew myself that was listen i don't believe what i just said there i i just said it because i feel like i'm trying i can't make it go away uh, so i'm just trying to fucking okay here we go i guess you I can make it go this away. is the good the, the, the glass half full you said it hey it came to you. It came to you. Yeah, no, you're right. You're right. Well, listen, man, we end every episode with this. Dom the Hypnotist recommends what movie to the 2000% raise audience? I can tell you what my favorite movie is, or one of my favorite movies is 40 Year Old Virgin. Oh, that's a great but, one. Uh, Dude, 40 Year Old but, uh, Virgin, Virgin and Something About Mary. I, I laugh out loud, even though I've seen oh, them both a hundred times. I, I laugh out loud. Every time. Yeah. Every time. Yeah. It's like you can't help it. Yeah. Um, I would say, uh, Watch a funny movie, whatever that funny movie is, because laughter is healing and it's contagious and yep. it could uh, take you out of a, we actually have, uh, do you know Brian Callen? Uh, for, and I know the name. I do not know him personally. He, he's been on like the hangover. He's one of Rogan's like buddies. Okay. He's a comedian as well. Yeah. And uh, he's speaking at our event. He's going to do a show at our oh, event, cool. like a, a comedy show. Nice. And the reason why I want to interject that is to give people that sense of like, all right, let's just fuck, fuck all the problems and all the learning and everything. Yeah. Let's just have fun for the next hour you know so i would say a funny movie maybe 40 year old virgin there you go. we went full that. circle there watch 40 year old virgin there you go and, and, and <laughs> classics of the flintstones watching fred get hypnotized there you go yeah there you go all right thanks dom and that wraps up another episode of 2000 percent raise thank you for listening the best way to support our show is by leaving a rating or review on all platforms you listened on and of course by following liking or subscribing Visit us at 2000percentraise.com or at John Sarasani on TikTok and Instagram. And of course, my YouTube channel at John Sarasani's 2000% Raise. Find all the ways to follow today's guests in our show notes. Thank you for being a part of our entrepreneurial journey.